Hello, I'm Susanna and I'm going to read to you The Dawn Shops and this is out of a book told and drawn by Joyce Lancaster Breezley and if she's familiar that's because she wrote Millie Molly Mandy a long long time ago and this book was published by George G. Harrop back in the 1940s. The Dawn Shops Jessie had come from London with her father and mother to spend a summer holiday in a little village in the country. It was beginning to get dark when they arrived, but they could just see the pretty thatched cottages and quaint little shop windows and the old mossy bridge over the brook and bats flitting about in the still air. And Jessie was very excited at the thought of spending several weeks there. Directly they got in, she had to have her supper and go straight up to bed, for it was past her usual bedtime. So altogether, she didn't see much that night of where they were staying. She so longed for the morning to come that it seemed as if the night would never, never go. Owls were hooting outside and trees rustled every now and then and everything seemed so strange and new and full of possible adventures. Jessie didn't think she had slept at all, but she must have, for quite suddenly it seemed the room was filled with a dim light of grey early morning. And in a moment, she was out of bed and leaning from the window to see what she could see. The first thing that met her eyes was the mossy bridge over the brook quite near. There were little shops on it, which she had noticed the evening before. And a little bent old woman was sweeping the doorstep of one. And a second little bent old woman was shaking the doormat outside another. And while Jessie watched, a third little bent old woman began arranging the things for sale in the window of yet another. And the things looked so attractive and bright coloured from a distance that Jessie felt she must go and see them nearer. She looked down at the ground, wondering if she could possibly jump. And then she noticed that tendrils of the creeper which grew over the house had been trained across into a leafy ladder just beneath her window. So she climbed down them to the ground and set off for the mossy bridge. The little bent old woman had gone in, so Jessie went and stared in at each of the shop windows in turn. They really were fascinating little shops, full of the queerest things. One had an array of little tinseled boxes and jars and bottles containing glittering bright coloured powders and balls and liquids, which somehow looked as if they expected to be eaten or drunk. Another had a lot of cakes painted gold and silver and stitched with coloured thread, which didn't look as if they could possibly be eaten. And a third had trays of crystallised bats and owls and yellow striped snails. Or perhaps they were only sweets made to look like that. Jessie had her little handbag with her, containing a handkerchief and three pennies. So she thought she would go in and buy something, because the goods did look so nice and strange. She went into the first little shop with the coloured powders and bottles in the window. But when she got in, she was surprised to find that she could see into both the other shops, for they were all one inside, and the other two little bent old women were waiting behind their counters. Please, how much is that? asked Jessie, pointing to a pretty bottle of bright green liquid that sparkled in the sun. One penny, said the little bent old woman behind the counter. It's a floating mixture, very useful if you want to go bathing. You can't sink after a dose. Many people use it in their bath. Oh, said Jessie rather blankly, looking for something else. And what are those, please? Pointing to a frilly box of tiny pink balls. Souring pills, replied the little bent old woman. Handy if you want to do any climbing. One or two will make the highest wall jumpable. No cat should be without them. As a matter of fact, she added confidentially, I do quite a good trade with cats. And as she spoke, the little grey pussy from the house where Jessie was staying pushed open the door and came in on its hind legs. It looked rather shy when it saw Jessie and whispered behind its paw to the little old woman, Half a box of souring pills, if you please, ma'am. I found a half penny last night. So the little old woman made up the packet while Jessie stared at the little grey pussy and the little grey pussy fidgeted on its little hind feet and watched its tail swinging slowly to and fro. It seemed very relieved to get the packet and scampered out again in a great hurry. Well, my small dear, said the little old woman to Jessie. And now, what can I do for you? Will you have a fur growing powder in black, grey, white or tabby? Or some weight giving tablets? Useful in a wind. 
as you can't blow away after eating one or two. Oh, said Jessie rather blankly again, for she had never been in such a shop before. I, I think I'll have some of what that little cat bought, the souring pills. The little bent old woman made up the packet while Jessie looked about and presently caught the eye of the little bent old woman in the next shop, who beckoned her with her bent old finger. So when Jessie had paid her penny and received her jacket, she went through into the next shop. The second little old woman spread out her stock of queer cakes, large and small, and really, the more Jessie looked at them, the more queer they seemed. One was covered with icing, which she felt sure was just white china, and the little old woman, seeing where she was looking, remarked that it would wash beautifully, as if that were what one always wanted of cakes and a tray of delicious-looking pastries, still warm from the oven, were filled, Jessie was quite certain, with red sealing wax. Are these for eating? she asked. I expect you could eat them if you wanted to, when you've paid for them, replied the little old woman. So Jessie took out another penny from her purse and bought the most natural-looking cake she could find, only that was stitched with tinsel thread round the edge. Then, not feeling she wanted a crystallised bat or snail, she contented herself with a polite bow to the little old woman in the other shop and went out, though she felt rather uncomfortable and the little old woman looked at her in a rather surprised way. When she got outside on the bridge again, the sun was up and shining brightly and the little grey cat was staring at her from a high wall nearby, but it jumped down hastily on the other side as soon as it saw her looking. Pussy! called Jessie. Oh, do wait, Prissy dear. It was a very high wall, and Jessie suddenly thought of her souring pills. So she opened the box and ate one, and when she jumped, she nearly reached the top of the wall. She ate another and jumped, and then she could just see over, and the little grey cat was staring at her from the grass on the other side. So she quickly ate two or three more, and then she soured over the wall as easily as possible and the little grey cat scampered off, leaping over back walls and hedges, with Jessie leaping after it. When Jessie caught it, they sat together on a branch and ate their little cake between them, all but the tinsel stitches. And then the little grey cat chased Jessie back over the walls and hedges. And when they reached the garden of the house where Jessie was staying, she was so breathless with jumping and laughing that she couldn't get up as high as her window again until she had eaten all the rest of the souring pills. Then she gave a spring and shot through the air, right through the window and onto her bed, at the very same moment that the door opened and her mother came in to tell her it was time to get up. And it was a funny thing, but when she dressed and went out to look at the mossy bridge again, it was much further from the house than she'd remembered, and there were no little shops in it. It was far too small.